Hello guys, so we are now in Dubai at Cardano Summit and here with you Anna Tutova, co-founder of Coins Telegram and our guest uh, Frederick Grigard, uh, who is uh, CEO of Cardano Foundation. So great to have you here, Frederick. Thank you and thank you for coming. Thank you. Can you tell about your background and how did you get involved first in crypto and blockchain? Yeah, uh, so basically uh, um, I went out of the army I had, uh, went to university in economics and they were talking about oil trading and trading contango. And as a young optimist, I went down to my local bank and said, you know, I want to trade that futures contract. And the girl said, you cannot. I said, what do you mean? I have money. I'm a Danish citizen. I've been, this has been the bank I've been in my whole life. You know me. Why can I not? And we had a bit of a discussion and then this, she called the manager. And it ended up with I couldn't trade that futures contract, which I was really sort of upset about first because it can be very hard to learn very theoretical things if you don't touch it and feel mm -hmm. it. And the second part is it dawned on me that there is some people who have access and some people who don't. Some people is born with the right connections. Some people have trading inside, liquidity inside and those things. And they seem to just, you know, propel themselves and get, you know, more wealthy and get more resources. And then there's the rest of the world uh, who don't have access to that. So I set forward on a journey to democratize access to capital markets. And uh, many years later, uh, Bitcoin came. Mm -hmm. And I was really, really intrigued about the ability Bitcoin gives you to move financial assets outside the established, guarded system. Um, yeah, and the rest is sort of history. Uh, which year did you discover Bitcoin? Which year? Yeah. Huh. It must have been in 2013 or 14 around there. Oh, wow. Is it silly? But unfortunately, I actually didn't buy any because I was uh, building banks for a living and I was building mm -hmm. uh, liquidity rails. I built the first robot advisor in Switzerland and, and a couple of other things. And, and the compliance department told me, um, it, you know, basically I'm not allowed to buy that asset. Uh, then I will be fired uh, due to an opinion from the European Central Bank. And uh, so I helped uh, the early startup companies in Switzerland uh, to get banked because I was building banks and mm -hmm. I was helping to build asset management and rails, but I couldn't help them with my own bank, which was weird. Uh, but then I thought at least I can uh, help them to get access to the banks uh, so they could get a bank account. And um, unfortunately, uh, you know, now we have Crypto Valley and Crypto Nation mm -hmm. been part of generating tens and thousands of jobs and thousands of companies in Switzerland Been really fortunate to work with the regulators and to be a part of the whole journey. Uh, but still today, um, the, the risk of being debanked because you're within crypto is, is so big. Yeah. And it's something we all have to be aware of when you have responsibilities to communities and to uh, employees, because, you know, if people work for you, you want to pay them a salary or you want to pay them an incentive. And the fact that we are still under scrutiny is sometimes a bit mind-boggling. And as well, when did you start buying your first Bitcoin? <laughs> uh, that was unfortunately much later. Uh, so I, I, I exited the bank uh, and then I, I went into uh, PwC mm -hmm. to work with uh, lawyers and auditors. Because what I kept hearing was that uh, there's a regulatory problem or the auditors won't allow us to do something. Mm -hmm. And I, I needed to upgrade my knowledge to understand how uh, audit and regulation impacts the target operating model of banks and of, uh, you know, uh, the financial system. So only when I joined PwC, I was able to do that, uh, which must have been about eight, eight something years ago. Yeah. Still not bad. And can you tell about uh, your starting of the work with Cardano Foundation? So you just switched from PwC to Cardano and you never joined any other blockchain company from what I've seen. That's correct, yeah. Um, so in PwC, I built up uh, the Emerging Technology Lab of PwC Switzerland and the Blockchain um, Capability Center of uh, Europe mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and abroad. And I was actually part of through changing the audit methodology for banks that they can hold bitcoins on and off a balance sheet depending on the circumstances. I've been a part of uh, the second version of Libra from Facebook. I've been part of creating the two first uh, crypto banks in the world, so SEPA and uh, Amina. Uh, I've been part of the first regulated asset manager. I implemented altcoins with my team uh, for the first fully regulated bank. 
so I had a I had a lot of exposure um, through my work in blockchain because it was quite unique that I had access to international lawyers mm -hmm. from all around the world through PwC. I had access to um, financial auditors from around the world, right? Plus I had access to, through the consulting arm, to any kind of financial market uh, infrastructure from banks to settlement systems. Mm -hmm. And then I built up a team of uh, engineers which basically gave me the technical knowledge to combine that. Um, but when I joined PwC, I actually had a short list of uh, 10, 12 companies where I thought that there was something wrong, you know, something where I could potentially bring the power of PwC to push something forward. Mm -hmm. And one of those companies were, uh, one of those projects was Cardano. I just thought it was a regulatory problem back then from the outside, but uh, it turned out that that was not the case. So, and um, yeah, I just, I, I really just buy into the tenets of Cardano and I buy into the vision of Cardano. Mm -hmm. And currently there are as well a lot of different layer ones, layer two superior. So how do you see the competition? Or oh, it's not really a competition and there is place for everyone. And where is your focus? I see you currently as well partner with a lot of enterprises, uh, with different international organizations, government bodies, like here, for example, with Dubai police, you made the partnership in March. Yeah. So the focus of the Cardano Foundation is really to do three things. One is uh, to bring regulatory clarity to policymakers, regulators, auditors around what's possible on the blockchain. And that means that you need to go wider than capital markets and wider than, you know, store of value. Mm -hmm. So uh, people need to understand that blockchain is going to be the foundational infrastructure for all emerging technologies, but also for legacy systems of the world. Um, the other part is operation resilience. So if you want to run a nation state on a blockchain, like really not just sort of store hash value, but really mm -hmm. use it for identity and so forth, you need to ensure that the blockchain don't go down. That is, uh, you have a disaster recovery process, you have risk mitigation, mm -hmm. that it exists in five years time. I mean, how many blockchains have you seen come and disappear in just a few years, right? So this idea that we are actually working on this 10, 20 year certainty for Cardano is actually, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I guess for some viewers quite uh, boring, but it's really unique in terms of what's possible on Cardano. And the last is that work around um, enabling adoption. We think about it as the art of the possible. So later today you will see a presentation from the National Space Agency about what you know is possible uh, in their organization using Cardano. But you will also uh, think about how do you take physical items and put it on the blockchain mm -hmm. for authenticity and uncertainty, but also how you create voting systems, how you create security, uh, so CSD, so centralized security deposits. So basically how you run the future financial market mm -hmm. infrastructure. We can do that on, on, on Cardano. And uh, with the layer ones and layer twos and layer threes and, and you know, CK rollups, um, what we really have with Cardano now is we have a fantastic opportunity of a very secure uh, layer one. And what we have now is as we have something called uh, isomorphic state channels, which is the, what Ethereum really tried to do with Plasma. Mm -hmm. And that means that we can anchor a permission setup where you can do a billion transactions in a, in a light consensus. And if we ever have a conflict, we can do the conflict resolution directly algorithmically over the Cardano mainnet. Mm -hmm. We also have the ability to uh, do like 90 billion transactions in one day and put it into one block. We actually took the whole Bitcoin uh, blockchain and put it into one block in Cardano and have it automatically updating. So, um, so we can do really a lot with these cryptographic uh, primitives on Cardano. Uh, we just announced um, that Cosmos is now fully uh, bridged through the IBC bridge to Cardano. So if you have the bespoke uh, healthcare model, you can spin that up in the Cosmos ecosystem. We have mm -hmm. some SDKs for that. And you can anchor that into Cardano. Um, so what we're really thinking about is that we don't think there's going to be one blockchain ruling them all. We think there's going to be the need for very operation resilient base layers who has certain characteristics. And then you need to be able to cover with uh, CK rollups, with state channels, mm -hmm. with business logic around the sides to match your business model. And all of that has to be, uh, you know, trust has to come through cryptography and collaboration. And you need to get that right. And then we believe in, in, in solid money. Mm -hmm. we, you know, this idea that we just replicate the central banks of the world, we, we don't think that's a good idea. You need to have solid money like Bitcoin yeah. or ETA um, in order to get also economic uh, incentives and uh, security around that part of the system. And what are the most exciting use cases of application of Cardano blockchain for you? 
Oh, there's so many exciting things. So um, one of the reasons why we bring a thousand people uh, here to Dubai uh, for, the, for, the, for the third year now in a row is because I also learned something. Mm -hmm. And there's so many projects in Cardano that uh, you know, it's impossible to know where to start and I don't have the possibility to look into it. But uh, one I might say I'm really excited about is something called Landano. Um, and Landano is basically about property rights in Africa on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. And what they've done, which is quite unique, is they went from city to city, from chieftain to chieftain in Mozambique, and they collected 25,000 property titles. They put it on the Cardano blockchain. And now the next step is they're allowing um, a microfinancing and collateralization of the deed um, to ensure that you know they can get uh, you know more farming equipment and other things but it also creates an economic identity plus it creates stability because in many countries uh, the, the the commercial records uh, is not there or is not legable enforceable and that means that you know there is an incentive to create a you know to just take out the chieftain who knows mm -hmm. the history and then you know suddenly you own the land but by actually putting that on an immutable blockchain you start creating stability now i think we cannot create peace but at least we can strive towards create stability and economic opportunities for everybody around the world. So that's exciting. The other thing that's exciting, as you mentioned, uh, the, uh, the Dubai police and local law enforcement, the ability that you can walk, I mean, in Dubai, it's very safe. Let's be very yeah. honest, right? <laughs> but just because Dubai and UAE is so safe and they're very ahead of digital transformation, why would they share private identifiable data with the rest of the world mm -hmm. in a centralized system where you don't know who controls it and people might have backdoors. So the ability to show that the UAE can be the leader of uh, global law enforcement in terms of collaboration, make the world a safer place by not sharing privacy and uh, private identifiable information and by that keeping the tenants of the local culture here safe I think that's a very interesting uh, use case because it opens up this application that you don't have to have to share real information, but you can share a cryptographic version mm -hmm. and still have global law enforcement working together on a global standard. And I think very often what we do is we are so fast, so we cut corners because you know it's a difficult problem. So we say, oh, we need to incorporate an entity who takes mm -hmm. care of that. And then we incorporate another entity and another mm -hmm. entity. And then you have this completely defragmented world who doesn't collaborate together and everybody fights for their salary and fights for their existence. But what we are trying to do is to create a collaborative economy where people collaborative without uh, and, and participate also in the revenues of the collaboration and the incentives without actually um, you know, selling their soul um, and I think that's um, very unique about blockchain. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing your expertise and uh, your background with us. And uh, hope to have uh, to see more exciting partnerships on Cardano side. Oh, there will be hundreds. <laughs> so next time we speak, I'll mention two others. And we can speak every single day for the next couple of months. And I will mention something new for you. It's yeah. truly exciting. <laughs> that's cool. Thank you.